you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beard Brigade. Dre's looking at me like, what the fuck? We're live? <laughs> yeah, we're live, baby. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing the nonstop extravaganza talk to the beard episodes, and you all know how this is, and it, Dre doesn't need an introduction. You all know who Dre Roman is. Hello. Tell me why you That's wanted to fuck Spock. <laughs> <laughs> who did it? <laughs> Which version? Now there are like three versions. Leonard Nimoy is the best. Although the new guy was pretty good. I, I think he was pretty good. He wasn't bad well, at all. Of course, you know, you have to have the original. And then the other guy. What is his name? He was on Heroes? Oh. I was wondering about that if I needed to have. There we go. Because, see, I forgot one of the four steps. We were talking. I have oh, four well. steps to go to go live, and I forgot one of them this time still. After I was talking about I have four steps, and I forgot one of them. The new guy wasn't bad. <clears throat> Leonard Nimoy was the best Spock, absolutely by the far. The middle guy, I like him. He was on Heroes. What's his name? Yes, Zachary. Yeah, Quinto. I really liked him. And then like the the commercial that he had with Leonard Nimoy. It was that a car was, commercial. That was and excellent. Then, and Leonard Nimoy pretends to die at the end, like Spock. So wait, I'm lost here because I've not been watching TV for the last couple of years. What I knew was Leonard Nimoy, and then the guy in the movies that J.J. Abrams produced. The Zachary Quinto. Excellent. But there, is there another guy after that now? Yeah, on Discovery. I don't know the actor's name. There's a guy that does Spock on Discovery? Yeah. I missed it. Yeah. Yeah. So now I need uh, to watch Discovery. Yeah, because one of the main characters, Michael Burnham, and that is his like adopted sister. So uh, you get like, so it's earlier, but then they kind of go for it in time. It, it's, is it I a time, won't it, it's a time travel episode? <laughs> yeah, they're a show kind of. So. Jody and I joke about that all the time that uh, we don't like the time travel episodes. But yeah. then she's still, I know she's watched Discovery and I have my wife. Um, I yeah. know she's watched it. And well, I you haven't. can ask her about it because there is time travel. And and she's hopefully probably going to be watching some of these. Not while she's driving. She's driving back from the Renaissance Festival right now. So baby, mm -hmm. if you're watching us, stop. Um, <laughs> don't do that. I would do it. But anyways, <clears throat> Leonard Nimoy was the best by far, mm -hmm. I think. And we were talking about Leonard Nimoy's uh, uh, COPD because you, you weren't aware that he had COPD. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, he had the best voice ever. Did you hear him and Shatner both did it? Um, it's hard to say Shatner and not say like Shat, like shit. It's mm -hmm. hard. Him, him and uh, Shatner both did music. In they this. did. Didn't he have a song about a hobbit? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think I've seen, I've watched it on YouTube. It's hilarious. I'm happy that he didn't do that because it freaked me out. And this was one of the things he ran into as an actor was that he couldn't take on roles other than Spock. Because people got freaked out when he smiled. Ah, uh, yeah. Because he got typecast into that whole, he's a serious, he's Spock all the freaking time. Which is also why they did, I can't remember if it was in a movie or in an episode of Star Trek. He uh, was laughing. He, he'd gone hysterical. It was when they did the the Vulcan sex thing where he Conf has- far. God, you're cool. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I, and I don't even consider myself that much of a Star Trek person, but I tend to remember certain things. That's excellent. So. Well, he freaked out and he started laughing in it. It was like the freaky, scary. It mm -hmm. was scary seeing him laugh. So he couldn't do any other shit. But anyways, I, I know that we're not going to talk about Star Trek the entire That's time, funny. but I, we were talking about it and I couldn't stop because I'm a Leonard Nimoy fan. I love him mm -hmm. to death. Um, so you are a writer. Yes, I am. <laughs> as, as everybody knows. Um, and I've seen you around these cons, but we, until last night, we hadn't really sat down and, and, and talked uh, before. Like no, this. and you appeared to recognize my name, and I was super excited about that. Like, I went I went up later and messaged, I was like, to my significant other, my sister, I'm like, John Solo knew my name. I oh think that goodness. we all do the same thing. Yeah. Because I did the same thing when I was like, Drea knew who I was. Yeah. Um, I didn't text my significant other because that's, it was late when she was in bed. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you've been at this for a while. How long have you been writing? Actually, a little bit less time than Abigail Cade. Um, so my first book came out in December of 2018. I always wanted to write. Um, ended up getting a PhD in English and teaching too much, which, by the way, I'm pretty good at. I actually have a lot of patience for for it, I just internally say rude things to my students, and I, I, I filter that out. I would like, kill them. oh my god, would you just look at the message board? And it's right there. Instead, I'm like, okay, it's right here, and it says blah blah. You know, because the trick is you're supposed to say things tr three times. Mm -hmm. It's really like 33 times. Yeah, no, and I, then they still don't. I know. couldn't do it. I would kill them. I, um, 
Anyway, I always wanted to write, and I always wanted to write romance, but then I would start. I have so many MF romance stories started, and then they would fizzle out, and it was always the female character that I felt confined, and I didn't really know what to do. And then my sister mentioned that she was reading MM romance, and I had read some MM manga, and um, just like some actual gay fiction writers. What's manga again? Japanese. Japanese yeah. comics. Yeah. I worked at a Barnes and Noble like during grad novel. school. Okay. And it's... and I read a lot. I read through the romance section and the in the manga and all that kind of stuff. And so I was like, oh, well, my sister is a voracious reader. And so she was like, Oh, I really like MM Romance and I think you should read this. And so I started reading like Sloan Kennedy. And then uh Impreg came up. And I was like, I don't really know about this. And so, but then I started reading Susie Hawk. And really fell in love with like her um, Hollydale series. And then my first two books were contemporary. And I kind of felt like I was beating my head against the wall. Um, I just felt like I didn't really know what to do with them. And then I was reading a lot of Ville Valley. And I got a plot bunny for my own Omegaverse Impreg stuff. And so then I asked Gia. Gia didn't ask me. Gia did not know me. Um, I asked Gia. Uh, Reeves, who does the Vale Valley, shared universe stuff. And then I did a Christmas elf who has amnesia. And so then I've stayed mostly in Omegaverse impreg. Um, did the Christmas elf get pregnant? Uh, yes, actually, eventually. He has magical twins because um, the elf is very magical. So There's something always – There's it's just such an easy joke. Like if you ask things like, well, did the male – you know, did he poop out a baby? People just laugh. See? Yeah. <laughs> it works like a charm. I don't – but it, this is a serious genre. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this last night. And you wouldn't think it at first. It seems – No. It seems ridiculous, a man pooping out a baby. And I say that in a humorous fashion. It's not really pooping out a baby. I just do that because it's – funny but um this is a very serious genre that not serious but it's a very big genre that's mm -hmm. grown substantially um the impression that i i got at the time 2017 was when i was introduced to this was this is a hot thing right now um i actually did an interview years ago on another podcast where um <clears throat> I, the, the podcaster kind of kind of implied that mm -hmm. well this is a, a flash in the pan you know that sort of thing uh, you know th this is the it's impreg <laughs> you know they, mm -hmm. nobody was taking it very seriously impreg seems to be here to stay a lot of people really enjoy this but there's i think a uh, um th there's an element of this that writers get to express themselves and how they feel with with a lot of things that are going on in today's society in mm -hmm. general um i've seen this done with quite a few of my clients um, where they're able to really explore the um, women are not being treated correctly in today's society. Oh, yeah, and gender in and sexuality and all of these dynamics. Like Letta Blake has a very serious dystopian, dystopian like her Heat of Love series. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, in her world, the alphas and the omegas were scientifically created because all of the women die mm -hmm. and the species needs to continue. But then, like, this religion developed and, like, omegas don't have a whole bunch of rights and they really are supposed to procreate or... Mm -hmm. You know, they're not considered all that valuable. Um, and I tend to do the more fluffy stuff. But for me, it's just more the emotional kind of stuff. Like, because with Impreg, most of the time it has like the alpha omega <laughs> dynamic. So you have like this alpha character who has a knot on his penis. And then you have omega characters who are capable of getting pregnant, sometimes don't know that they can. So sometimes it's a surprise. So, the knot thing confused me. Um like uh, I, I've mentioned this gal so many times in you know, the last couple of days. I don't know why, but Anna Weinhardt, she's a, a friend of mine, and she she does some wonderful things in impreg. She also writes the longest sex scenes I've ever seen in my life. They're like, I mean, very I, fifteen thousand words, twenty thousand words sex scenes. They just keep fucking. It's it's a lot. Um, but I didn't know how the knot worked and I don't know why I got on this kick where I needed to figure it out and everybody's knots are a little bit different. Apparently mm -hmm. how the writers right, write them yeah. and all that. So then she started sending me pictures and <laughs> illustrations, of course, because it's Anna Weinhardt. <laughs> I understand way more about how knots work now than I, I wanted to even it's, but it you did help me a under tutorial then for future impreg writers. It made me understand because the only thing I had in, in my mind was like, yeah, I saw the dog stuck together. Like, you know, that's happened when I was a kid. And, but I also saw the dog have a baloney rind come out his butt and that's not happening mm -hmm. in impreg. So yeah. what's it? But now I know. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you doing any faded mates kind of stuff? Is that? Yeah. Um, 
And then I, on my own Omegaverse series, uh, Waves of Fate, the first one of that, The Silky's Coat, came out in 2019 after I had done um, The Veil Valley and The Amnesiac Elf. Um, anyway, so That's fantastic, you just by the way. kind of it's figure so out your own dynamics. And then I kind of accidentally wrote a slow burn Faded Mates. Accidentally? Like the, yeah, accidentally. You it just wasn't. kind of forgot about it in the middle, kept writing? No, no. <laughs> it, that's what the characters wanted. Okay. So, you know, Very the good. one character who was an Omega and he knew was, he was an Omega, he's shocked to find out that he has a Faded Mate. He didn't realize that he could have a Faded Mate. Mm-hmm. Um, when there's a little bit of a conflict mm. with his own mother, who's a nurse who like, as soon as she found out, cause he gets, he's human. So he's kind of diagnosed later at goes into heat at 16 and starts having like, what would be like horrifying symptoms if you didn't know what was going on. And so then she becomes like this advocate education person, but she fails to keep him updated on her new research. So he doesn't know that he can have a mate until someone shows up and is like, hi. I'm your mate. Yes. Take but off your but pants. the thing is is that he's on that guy, Gregory, is kind of trying to keep it a secret because he's like, oh, he's human. I'm silky. I'm a magical seal. I take my coat with me in both forms. His mate helps him not lose it. I love these conversations. So. This is like, I have the best fucking job ever. Yeah. I, I really do. Like, Well, it's based in folklore because you have silkies. And mm-hmm. usually with silkies, though, in folk- folklore, it's usually female silkies. And then a guy seduces them and then steals their coat so they can't go back to the ocean. But um, in I'm of course, writing MM, so I'm writing more on on the men. And so he was trying to take care of his coat, but he was going to dinner with his mom, and he didn't want to make her upset, so then he drops his coat, and then the human Omega saves it. And then he's like, oh, this is my mate. And the human's like, what? Like, I kind of... Uh, I don't think that I'm cool with this. Like, you're really hot, and you're rich, and you're really nice, but, like, I'm not sure about this, you know? And you kind of smell like fish. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, like, it, you know what? I didn't go the scent route because that's usually we, in there. But I had ocean lot. shifters. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me for the ocean. So I went with sound. Okay. So it's his voice because, you know, like echolocation, dolphins make noises, whales, all this kind of stuff. It made more sense to me that it would be a sound. Actually, it's awesome. Um, so. there, it's part of the bingo game, the the – the MM Romance plot bingo game. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've seen this before, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's part of it, uh, the cinnamon smell or whatever it is yes, that they exactly. smell. Yes, yeah. um, exactly. Which is – I'm not actually making fun of it. It's whatever. Um, and and I have a theory, too, that women are very scent-oriented. Um, so that, well, that is one of the reasons. Well, is strongly tied to memory. I don't know if that has anything to do with gender – or not? Yeah, I don't know. I can't smell for shit. So maybe it does. I don't That's know. The <laughs> Could have been all those years of heavy smoking and cocaine. I'm not sure. But <laughs> one way or the other. But it always cracks me up when I see the scent come in. Um, and authors like like Susie Hawk, for instance, um, she actually very – I've talked to her about this. She will very specifically think about in advance. I'm writing 10 books in a series, and there's going to be this couple, this couple, this couple. What's going to be their scent? And yeah. like she'll lay it out in colors. She'll lay out colors for each of them and all this stuff. It's insane to me, but it's very well thought out. And when put together nicely, it creates a nice little package. Um, the sound thing is interesting. I've not seen that done yet. So that's another original twist, which is awesome. Yeah, well, that's why I like it because then you can be really creative. And so I like the paranormal, magical stuff. And it seems that more readers find me that way than have read my couple of contemporary books. So that's the way I've been going, even though I want to get back to the contemporary series and sort of finish that off because I have a cop who has a dramatic story and it needs to be told, but I haven't really been, you have to be in the right emotional space Mm -hmm. to write something and his story is very angsty and I haven't been there. So I'd rather write about elves and horse shifter firemen saving soap opera. Wait, horse shifter firemen. Yes. I have quite a few in the Vale Valley, the Valley would spin off. Like mostly it's been, I had a, a, a wolf, shifter firemen and then mostly horse shifter firemen like i'm not around horses i have to research and find out about horses but now i read about them so horse shifters though i always just occasionally i said this yesterday occasionally in these conversations i have these moments where i'm like how did i get here <laughs> this is an awesome conversation um the Vale valley stuff are you, so you are continuing on in that you're gonna yeah do that? so that the original series had five seasons and then um gia it was more invitation only she wanted to spin it off but she wanted to pair it back and so mm-hmm. invitation she invited my friend um shane morton um 
to do that. And then that was a lot of fun helping him, you know, do his first kind of impreg Omega verse stuff because you get to choose. I mean, there are sort of guidelines for the series, these certain things um, that you can and can't do, but they're kind of general guidelines and you really get to work within that. And you mm -hmm. get to be very creative. So I've had like magical elves. I've had Santa Claus. I've had, who does not like that. He goes by Nick. He does not like to be called Santa Claus. I don't Claus. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <Santa Claus. laughs> Don't call, don't call me Santa Claus. Well, it, and it's the 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 fun of being able to. I think Patty Logan told me once that she's writing this this series she's working on that uh, um, if she doesn't know how to solve the plot point, well, it's magic, done. <laughs> um, and 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 it, she can, she can have a lot more flexibility with that um, and being able to explain something by magic. Mm -hmm. um, and then it turns into ridiculous. It's like the she has a unicorn that that came uh, sparkles that's that sort of because it's a magical unicorn so when it comes it sparkles and you know hmm. um shit like that that's can happen that's interesting i thought so i'll, um, I'll have to go find that cuz i've written a unicorn what and, book was and that it doesn't that have just happened in just have sparkly sparkly, come. sparkly unicorn come now i've missed an opportunity <laughs> to have sparkly yeah. come <laughs> i know you can write it later. i will <laughs> Yeah, but you can explain it with magic, and it, so it yeah. opens up a whole not a whole new world. Whereas in contempt, you certainly you know the rules. You're in, yeah. It, you know, we, I'm in this world. Exactly, we work in it every day. Um, are you're still teaching? You said yes. Um, so I'm teaching full time. So college level composition and then ethnic studies classes, mostly African American literature and culture stuff. And my my PhD was in um, minority American women writers, and then I ended up teaching in ethnic studies, and I really enjoy that. And but I've taught writing for a long time, and I'm a little tired of it. I like the students, but like it's just a lot of commenting and grading, and it can be a little bit of a grind. But it's really cool when they get something when they're like, "Oh, I can do this and write a thesis statement this way, and this goes in my conclusion." That kind of stuff is cool. Do you have so. any budding authors? Because I would think your experience in, especially you're creating a small business, you can actually show someone, um, a, a college student. Hey, not only uh, I know you're learning mm -hmm. writing, but uh, if you would like to make a living at this, I'm actually making a you know a part time living at this. I know you're you're kind of splitting careers, but right. that would seem to be valuable experience to be able to share. I would think. You know. Um if it comes up, so sometimes people will be like, oh, well, I like to write fiction or I like to write poetry. And then I tell them, like, you do have the option to self-publish. You don't have to go through all those gatekeepers to get into traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I live in Tucson. And there's if they're poets, there's a huge poetry community there. So I can, like, tell them the names. I'm friends with the person who's actually the Poet Laureate of Tucson. I've known them for years. So, like... I can help them with that, but then if they want to sell public fiction, you know, I can, okay, well, do you need an editor? This is a pretty good company, something mm -hmm. like that. If it comes up, I'm not going to offer that, and I'm not going to tell them my uh, pen name. Well, that, that was my... I, <laughs> At I, all. It makes perfect sense. You wouldn't tell them your pen name, because I, I'm sure that... I don't know if the college would frown on it or not. I, I know... I had I've, I've had someone in the last couple of days that was that was on explained uh, it was Amy Lane uh, she got fired from her high school um, because they found out that she was working that's in, happened to a couple of people yeah um, which is we've come a long way but we're mm -hmm. not there yet um, this is certainly not I don't know, I, I think that'll change eventually um, but also with the call out culture that we're in right mm -hmm. now and that sort of thing it, you need to be extra careful that being said though you can at least share your experience of. I'm not telling you my pen name, but but this I am a writer and I can right, and I can be more open about it because I mean I told people I told uh, the program that I'm teaching for that you know I was going to miss a couple of days and then I gave my students outside work um, that they can do you know for their next project and it's about time for the first project to end in the semester and they're going into the second project so they got work to do on that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I just, you know, had those days where they would know that I wasn't um, there. But usually people are excited that you're doing something outside, that you're doing something creative. Sure. Um, that it's unique. I would think. I mean, yeah. I didn't go to any fancy college. Mm 
Um, but uh, that being said, um, it would be incredibly valuable for me if I was trying to get into the profession, being able to talk to somebody that's actually in the profession and actually mm. doing it. Um, seems to be like a useful thing. Um, do you want to quit and just be a full-time writer? I would love to be a full-time writer, but I have to do the business side things that I'm learning and yeah. that I don't, that, you know, for whatever personal circumstances or just too much work, I haven't managed to do enough of yet. Like I need to work on my newsletter. I need to work on my website. I need to, you know, work on the advertising, all that kind of stuff before I can feel comfortable and start like scaling that back. I would love to. To well, do that. if it's like if it's like my business, twenty percent of my time, maybe thirty percent of my time max is spent recording in a booth. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of it is running the business. It's, it takes so much more time than what you would think. It's not all just sitting down. I'm sure as a writer right. and writing, there's a lot more that goes into it. Um, honestly, oh, yeah. I wish I could just act. <laughs> That'd be fantastic, but this is not the way it works. Um, if if you do make the jump mm -hmm. eventually, um, do you see yourself staying in the MM romance genre? Is this kind of are you finding a yeah, home here? I I like romance. Romance is the top selling genre, um, yeah. just generally, and it really keeps the book businesses in business. People can look that up; it's true, um, as far as the numbers go. And so, people frowning on it or acting rude about it always annoys me. And that's because, as you were talking about earlier, I believe with Shane, they. Romance is a very woman associated genre and like so there's sexism about it, but it really is like who doesn't want an HEA? Life sucks. Mm -hmm. Just for most of us, most of the time we can be happy, good things can happen. Lots of life sucks. So why shouldn't we have a genre that celebrates the happily ever after? Mm -hmm. You know, but that's kind of been had some misogyny and stuff of against it but i love romance and i would like to find a way to write some mf romance i do have some plot bunnies for some lesbian romance too i even have a great cover unfortunately i forgot who i bought a pre-made from someone <laughs> morning yep. star morning star ashley i think um that would be for that story so i would love to write full time and ideally i would mostly write mm probably mostly impreg with a little bit of contemporary but i would love to have a few the reason i keep asking you this is MF. because everybody you're you're people talk about you and you're supposed to, i've not read one of your books you not paid me to but uh everybody <laughs> says you're really good oh, um, good yeah so that you, makes me feel good you could yeah. you could you could do it like if you want but yeah, I keep on hammered at home because I'm like, why the fuck is she not writing full time? Maybe she really likes teaching. So I went down. I'm apologizing about my line of questioning. What did I do wrong? No. I, no. <laughs> um, you could do it like if you wanted. Uh, you're very well, popular. I, I hope so. Well, I, I'm I'm working on it. Didn't you need you need a PA, right? I um, do need a PA, yeah, but so. I, I possibly have a lead on that if the Excellent. person doesn't have too many authors already. Because that it. happens, you know, someone's really good and then everyone snaps them up and you're like, mm. Then you just have to take out an author's knees and you're good. They yeah, open up a slot exactly. And be fine. <laughs> but as you were mentioning with Abigail Cade, uh, you know, you can sit down to write, so they don't necessarily need their knees. God damn, you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> Jumped ahead I just of me on that pay one. attention to what what's going on. I can't help it. I can't turn it off. Yeah. Like I wish sometimes I could turn it off, but unfortunately, like oh, unfortunately, I heard you say that. Do you have a hard time sleeping? Yes, yeah. I do because then I'm I'm just going through all the things. I've seen so many people doing. just like that. I sleep like a baby. You know why? Because I'm <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Turn off. Yeah, time. exactly. Right now, you smart people, you got it all bad. Well, yeah, because then you're worrying about like, oh, is someone going to like that scene? And then I asked my sister, who inevitably is like, you're worrying about it too much. It's just fine because she's my alpha reader. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm very close with my sister, so she reads everything. Go kick him, Shane. Uh, it must be the soccer players who are. Yeah, here. they were out there earlier. It was anyway. hilarious. You guys might not be able to hear it, but there's a gaggle of children out in the hallway right now i'm um, just screaming yeah along. i wrote up with a couple of them and they were talking about their game and they were super excited this is last night i heard them talking okay. they were super excited because if they won that game they were going to the championship so they were i i, I, I rode down won. with them in the elevator this morning and i did my i have like three jokes and mm -hmm. one of them is uh <laughs> do good we're all counting on you i did that as they left and i heard one of them say what did that mean man say <laughs> 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 I, 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 there's a weird guy in the I, elevator I, yeah i didn't mean to scare you counting son. on us <laughs> exactly this is a big deal mom <laughs> <laughs> the uh the, the the smart person sleep thing though um 
I have found that uh, y- you all have, you don't think about what you just put in your book. What most of my, my wife, my, mm-hmm. my best friend, those people, what they think about is a conversation that they had in like 1998. Yes. And it comes up and you're like, I could have said this. And you ask them, I'll ask my wife sometimes, you're not asleep yet, are you? No, you've been here two hours. I just got here and you're still not asleep. What's going on? What are you thinking about? Shut up. <laughs> and then she finally tells me. So does that go through your roll through? Your- yes. Or else you're like, you're friends with someone and you know, you had a fight like 10 years ago and you wonder if they think about that fight because you think about that fight <laughs> and really wish you hadn't said what you said or whatever it was. Yeah. And- now I'll take being dumb. I'm good with yeah, it. <laughs> so, or or I worry about sometimes because they do teach ethnic studies, and right now people are going crazy about like oh critical race theory, and I'm like oh my god, I had an entire section on my PhD exam of critical race theory. You don't even know what it is. <laughs> is would you please shut up? Um, <laughs> but then I worry like oh maybe how did I phrase that in my class? But so far the class is going well, so yeah. no one's complained at me or about me. So don't they have like don't they have like a, a I can complain about my professor on like a little. Yeah, I don't look those thing. things up. You yeah. can also like rate the hotness of the professors. No too. shit. Yeah. Oh, that website's been around forever. You're pretty popular, I bet. You- <laughs> I, I don't look at that stuff because you it's have to do scary. like swimsuit stuff or. I don't. I'm not know. trying to make it weird. No. I'm, I'll show myself out. No, <laughs> it's not weird. I'm sure some of them like. Go looking for things. There's a whole genre. That's a trope, I guess. The professor student thing, right? Oh, um, well, I had once I had to get onto a student, and it made me embarrassed to have to get on a student because stu- he kept oh, complimenting uh, now I hear me what in you're class. Saying, because you were just get on your student. That's- yeah, because he kept complimenting me in class, and I was starting to get really uncomfortable with it. So, like, I made an appointment with him, and when he showed up, he was kind of chagrined, and he said, "I know what this appointment is about. Yeah. I've been complimenting you too much in class, and I'll stop it." And I'm like, "Oh, good, thank you." Like, <laughs> You just talked yourself. Well, yeah, and that. I don't want to make you uncomfortable with the topic because you are actually a fucking teacher, so I don't want to. But yeah. but, but that has to be a weird thing, like the Mrs. Robinson deal. You're thinking about that in the back of your head, like are they looking? You got to probably be careful about what you wear and stuff. Uh, everything. Um, no, not necessarily. Like I remember, I wore a lot of really cute things when I started teaching, and I was like, I have a cute outfit on. Um, so. I wear a lot of scarves, um, so well, scarves they make notice you look, that. Yeah, that comes with a PhD. I've mm, noticed a I lot guess. of yeah the scarves. Thank you for coming on, by the way. Oh, thank you. No, well, thank you for inviting me. This was wonderful. Yeah, as I said, when I sat down last night, I met a couple people. That, like I, I knew who you were. Everybody mm-hmm. knows who you are, but I, I not had a chance to talk to you, so it was cool. Um, and so you're, you're, you're currently you're going to get back into the Vale Valley thing. You're doing that. Yes, I do. It's called the Fires of Daytime, and it comes out next month. And it's about a horse shifter fireman. Excellent. Um, who's very tall with a very deep voice, and he finds his faded mate. Oh, of course he is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hung like a he horse. Has to be. You might say. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to be a beautiful, beautiful horse as well. And then he, uh, his faded mate is a is a guy playing on a soap opera, like an old soap opera that's like falling apart at the seams. And then there's a kidnapping of a character, and there's like you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, 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 sounds- just fun, adventure, <laughs> not serious angst because I don't feel it right now. Yeah. So. Well, uh, they can they can find you now. What we do is we wave at the camera, say goodbye. Bye. Do you think that they have to have huge cocks in these books? Mm-hmm.